Similar and seemingly allochthonous rock formations to Betla Duromio, referred to by geologists as the Mamonia complex, can be found in many other areas of the Paphos district, such as Inya, Episcopi, the, the Arizos River Valley, the village of Mamonia, and the towering rock known as Gurtelorotsos. Their age ranges from between 210 to 95 million years. The reason why these rocks appear haphazardly placed, fragmented and deformed, is because they constitute shards of the African plate broken off during that plate's collision and subduction under the Eurasian. The emergence of Trodos had a profound effect on the geography of Cyprus. Its rise above sea level, in conjunction with its subsequent erosion, resulted in the lower rock strata now being found at its highest peaks. Geologically speaking, when one ascends Trodos today, one is essentially descending from the seabed into the depths of the earth and rock formations which once formed part of its upper mantle. Βρισκόμαστε στην κορυφή του Τρόδους, αλλά γεωλογικά βρισκόμαστε στον ανώτερο μαδίαν της Γης, στο βασίλειο του Πλούτονα. Και τα πετρώματα της περιοχής χαρακτηρίζονται σαν πλουτόνια πετρώματα. Η μοναδικότητα του Τρόδους συνίσταται στο γεγονός ότι για να μπορέσει κάποιος να πιάσει ένα δείγμα του ανώτερου μαδία της Γης, θα πρέπει να εκτελέσει γιώτρηση. 6 χιλιόμετρα κάτω από τον πυθμένο της θάλασσας, πράγμα το οποίο είναι ανέφικτο. The plutonic rocks are found at the highest points of Trodos around the peak of Olympus and in them we encounter large mineral crystals formed during the slow cooling of the magma. Such rocks are Hartsburgite, the difficult to melt remnant of the partial melting of the upper mantle, followed in turn by dunite, verlite, pyroxenite and gabbro. The area between Kakopetria and Trodos is nothing other than what has been left of these plutonic rocks, which have been partially or totally altered into serpentinite, within which asbestos can be found. <laughs> After the cessation of the underwater volcanic activity, there followed a period of geologic calm which lasted millions of years. During this time, various materials and microorganisms floated down through the water and onto the surface of Trodos, forming the sedimentary rocks which today cover the lavas. Από τα πρώτα ειζηματογενή πετρώματα που αποτέθησαν πάνω στι λάβε του Τρόδου είναι και τα άσπρα πετρώματα τα οποία βλέπουμε στο βάθο. Είναι πετρώματα βαθιά θάλασσα και δεν είναι τίποτε άλλο από κριτίδε ή στην καθομιλουμένη κυμολίε και αποτελούνται από μικροαπολιθώματα, μικροοργανισμού δηλαδή, οστρακώδει μικροοργανισμού που ζούσαν μέσα στη θάλασσα στην οποία σχηματίστηκε το Τρόδο. Because of the way they were formed, sedimentary rocks are characterized by successive layers of constituent materials as well as by fossils found in them. The study of the sedimentary rocks covering the lavas indicates a gradual shallowing of the depth of the sea as a result of the rising of Trodos, which emerged from the sea as a small island some 15 million years ago. Ακόμη έναν γεωλογικό στοιχείο τη ανύψωση του τρόδου είναι τα πετρώματα τα οποία βλέπουμε εδώ, τα ειζηματογενή αυτά πετρώματα, οι κερατόλιθοι και οι κριτίδε, τα οποία βλέπουμε να είναι και κλειμένα, ενώ αρχικά είχαν αποτεθεί οριζόντια αφού αποτέθησαν στον α, θαλάσσιο πυθμένα. Θα πρέπει να φανταστούμε αυτά τα πετρώματα ότι κάλυπταν ολόκληρον τον τρόδο και ανυψώθηκαν μαζί του. Έσπασαν, διαβρώθηκαν, αποκαλύπτοντας έτσι τα πετρώματα του τρόδους. Μουσική 
Some 10 million years ago, the sedimentary rocks deposited north of the area where Trodos was formed were pushed southwards onto the Trodos lavas and then rose, thereby giving rise to another island which today constitutes the Pentadactylos mountain range. However, the rising of Cyprus continues to this day, accelerating during the last two million years, even though not at a steady pace. In periods of rapid rise, erosion was heavy, and rivers formed deep gullies, leaving behind remnants of river deposits at various levels, something which characterizes all of Cyprus's rivers. The entire island finally emerged from the sea in its current shape sometime during the last 500,000 years. At a short distance from Nicosia, one comes across the Gakaristra Gorge. The rocks forming the walls of the gorge describe and testify to the final stages of the island's emergence from the sea. These rocks are rich in fossils of shells, mollusks and thysanopods such as Austria edulis and Balanus tintinabulum. Millions of years ago, the Cacaristra area was the mouth of a river. In some areas, the presence of fossils is indeed impressive. These are deathbeds created by the collective deaths of mollusks and thysanopods due to changes in the salinity and oxygen content of the water following alternating wet and dry periods. In addition to the Kakaristra Gorge, the rise of Cyprus can be seen in many other regions of the island, especially coastal ones. The scaly form appearance of Cape Greco is nothing more than a representation of the gradual raising of Cyprus. Each shelf constituted at one time the then coast, shaped by the action of the waves. Geologically, Cape Greco consists of limestone, indicating that some 20 million years ago the region was a coral reef. <laughs> Cabo Creco είναι γεμάτο από απικίε κοραλίων ηλικία 15 με 20 εκατομμύρια χρόνια. Αυτό μα λέει ότι ο βυθό τη θάλασσα ήταν λιγότερο από 200 μέτρα, που είναι το μέγιστο βάθο διείσδυση του φωτό και η θερμοκρασία στου 18 βαθμού Κελσίου. Sailing around Cape Greco, one is enchanted by the natural beauty and grandeur of the sea-girt limestone complex, where the erosion caused by the incessant action of the waves has carved out marvelous designs, shapes, forms, curves and caves. A vast open-air museum full of nature's sculptures, such that no sculptor's imagination could conceive. <laughs> Κάμε τα υφίσεις, δε Πασκαλίδες το. Σαν τα κολονάκια, για από ποιος ο ψαράς πάει να πεφερπές παντά. Του πάνω του ακριβώς είναι απίστευτο. Because of its global uniqueness, Trodos constitutes a pearl of attraction for many foreign universities which visit it for purposes of scientific research and training. Generations of students, professors and academia in general from all over the world have been and are trained in Cyprus. 
Hundreds of doctoral theses have been written on Trodos, thousands of scientific projects have been carried out, and a number of scientific conferences have been held on the matter. Here I am in Candria on the Trudos Mountains in Cyprus. I've been coming to Cyprus now for something like uh, 20, 30 years. I first came in 1970 to look at the geology in this area. Cyprus geology really is a mecca for us professionals. We like to bring our students here. In fact, I'm here with a group of students from the University of Hong Kong, and I've brought students from all over the world here to see the fascinating geological outcrops. The story that Trudos tells us is about the old ancient ocean floor of an ocean that existed a hundred million years ago called the Neotethian Ocean. The impressive topography formed through the rise of the Trodos Massif had a direct effect on the natural environment and also, directly or indirectly, every aspect of life and culture in Cyprus. The existence of the mountain range has given rise to a great variety of microclimates which, in conjunction with the various rock formations, have led to an interesting range of habitats in which a richly varied flora has developed comprising more than 140 endemic species, with most, over 90 in number, found in the Trodos mountain range. The highest peaks of Trodos can be described as practically semi-alpine. At elevations higher than 1400 meters and all the way up to the range's highest peak, that of Mount Olympus, the flora is dominated by the Pinus niger species, also known as black pine, with the area also hosting more than 40 endemic species and considered one of the most important habitats of Cyprus. On the Trodos rocks, usually at elevations higher than 1,000 meters and up to the top of Mount Olympus, there blooms when the snow melts between February and April, the endemic Crocus cypria, a perennial rhizome with a height of about 10 centimeters and white or purple flowers. During the same period of time, another perennial endemic plant makes its appearance on the rocky slopes of Trodos. This is the Arabis purpurea, commonly known as Tears of the Virgin Mary, which with its pink, light purple or crimson flowers adorns Trodos's mountain slopes at elevations from 600 to 1550 meters. The high concentration in plutonic rocks of metals such as magnesium, nickel, manganese, iron and others compelled certain plants to adapt to this environment by developing mechanisms allowing them to withstand the toxicity of these metals. On serpentinites, the altered plutonic rocks of Trodos, there develops a rare kind of habitat the serpentinophile moors. These are plant communities featuring perennial grasses and shrubs which develop exclusively on serpentinite rock formations and appear in pine forest clearings at elevations between 1600 and 1950 meters. This kind of habitat is encountered in Cyprus only on the Trodos mountain range and in the Akamas Peninsula. The serpentinophile plant communities of Trodos, veritable botanical gardens with an abundance of endemic plants flowering primarily in late spring and early summer, attract many local and foreign visitors who come to admire or study them. <laughs> 